a presentation uh, uh, about the reversalization of the anterior wall. According to um, OPCAP concept, this one is mainly based on Professor Lejean's OPCAP concept. Many, many, many aspects have to be fulfilled to have um, good OPCAP and successful OPCAP procedure. Starting with um, preoptive planning in a heart team, and more and more our patients show a lot of comorbidities. So we have to optimize the patient's conditions and we have to already decide which technique we want to apply and which corner vessels we want to revascularize and of we want to do a rostonotomy or a mid technique. Um, the anesthesia plays a major role, of course, in the OPCAP, um, as you have heard already by my former colleague, Dr. Sixt. And um, very important um, is uh, team communication during the whole procedure uh, where <clears throat> we perform a shared assessment of the patient's conditions. And we should both, um, the whole team, ensure a stress-free condition for the heart, patient, and the whole team. Of course, uh, it's <clears throat> also about, but not mainly about opera techniques, very important are the anastomotic skills, which we can learn um, in different um, environments, especially with um, simulator, uh, low fidelity models, um, but also to have a concept on how to perform this procedure with all these uh, components, small components. And um, we should know about um, troubleshooting, what uh, are doing we of uh, this ischemia, um, if the, we, we found hemodynamic deterioration, uh, especially all to avoid conversion. Conversion rate is a um, quality marker and should be less than 1% in a good team. And so there are now all these concepts which you can uh, study um, before um, starting with OPCAP, uh, with the OPCAP approach. For example, uh, the online course by Professor Sergeant. But now we have to, um, to, uh, to demonstrate how these, um, these co components of the concept are embedded in, in, the, in the procedure. Therefore, I want to show you step by step how to perform the realization of the anterior wall using two videos I made last week. Um, where, you, where we um, describe, the, in, in my opinion, the most important um, aspects for a successful revascularization of the anterior wall. And in both videos, you find, you find um, repeatedly um, <clears throat> these points. For the check of the hemodynamics by the team, um, how important is a bloodless field? how important it is to have a good mammary artery with enough length and how to, um, before ele uh, elevating the heart, how to, to plan uh, the curse of mammary artery and to mark the corresponding spots and how to, um, to, to study the anatomy where to push the octopus, how to communicate with the team, and um, how to um, prepare the LID, and um, how to always, uh, at a special points, to stop, to communicate with, the, um, with your colleagues, anesthesia from anesthesia, how about how to insert the shunt, and um, how to perform the anastomosis and check the anastomosis. Okay, start with the first video. <clears throat> we, um, <clears throat> before starting with the procedure itself, we are briefing the team. We talk about the patient, the, um, the special uh, um, features of these patients. There will be um, also the perfusionist who is not always in the room, but he's a member of the team. and. Uh, presents himself before starting. So, okay, we check the hemodynamic. Very important is the bloodless field. Um, so, you see, at the beginning, we see only the, the right ventricle. 
we open, then we um, harvest normally artery in a clipless technique. We ensure um, we open the, the per, um, pericardium. And of course, now, still with mammary retractor, before moving the heart, the natural curse, we mark the curse of mammary artery. So later, whenever you want to do your anastomosis, you have two referring points. Now you expose the anterior wall without touching the heart, using only uh, serial uh, traction stutures on, on the left side. You see now slowly the left the anterior wall comes into the view, but without touching the heart, without doing a sponge behind the heart, these things I um, I would not allow to do. So we have seen there was a, a hypercontractility of the heart. So we uh, increase the load by elevating only the legs, no trendalian book position. So we adapt now the tissue um, stabilizer, the octopus, um, to the surface of the heart. We don't like to push down the anterior wall because this may uh, uh, involve stress for the heart and um, reduce the um, heart function. We nicely expose here the LID with two uh, inverting stitches and we interrupt the flow only for a very short time. But before doing this, we again discuss with the team about um, the hemodynamic um, situation and situation of the patient. So we open the coronary and we insert an optimal size chunt. The larger the shunt, the, shunt, the better is the flow and the less uh, blood you have between the shunt and the coronary. So now we prepare the mammary artery. It's usually to do the anastomosis. We always start um, at the heel with a stitch from inside, outside, outside, inside. Then we bring down mammary artery and do an anastomosis um, as nice as possible. Mainly we use uh, eight zero. It was a mixed procedure. I use a seven zero because it's a high risk of damaging the, 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 the suture. So very important is this more, more and more, especially in the mix, but also here I put a shunt into the mammary artery so to, to control the inflow to keep it open, but of course every, um, <clears throat> everybody should use his um, anastomotic techniques. Of course, very important to go always 90 degrees through the, um, through the vessel wall to have an um, optimal um, radial, rad the, um, direction of the stitches. You see the heart is contracting not uh, normally, it's a little bit empty. So we, I would discuss with, with uh, anesthesia to give a little bit more uh, volume, but um, it's calm. It's not under stress, the heart. Both ventricles are contracting well. Also the color of the heart is nice. You've seen I put down some waxes here because it's, here's the diagonal branch. You see the direction of the needle. It's now it's towards me for an optic anastomosis should be able to um, direct your needles in, in, in all directions. And at the end, you have a nice curve of mammary artery in the natural position of, of, the, of the heart. Now the second video is to demonstrate, again, the important steps for the anterior wall revascularization, including also the different aspects concerning team approach and uh, 
stabilization of the patient's condition. So um, <clears throat> we start always with briefing of the team, discussing the main issues of this case. And um, here we present all team members, not only the surgeons, but also perfusionists, nurse, anesthesiologists. And um, <clears throat> so it's, um, we are all equal in the operating territory. We have a very uh, stable hemodynamic with a heart rate of 52. Very important, especially in these patients with osteotic bones is not to lose too much blood because this already is a, a, a stressing factor. We see only often the right ventricle, the left ventricle here only uh, by the mammary tractor. But I start already before I bring down mammary artery to visualize the anterior wall without touching the heart. Here, um, of course, the cut in the, uh, in the um, pericardium to allow a perfect curse of mammary artery in an inverse T form. And now I already place down mammary artery parallel to the LID and I mark now a point on the surface of the heart and also on mammary artery. I have two reference points. And wherever I want to do my anastomosis, I will stay with this perfect curse of mammary artery. You see, there is a strong contractility of the heart, which is a little bit too high for my uh, feeling. So I want to increase the volume loud to calm the heart. Because if the heart is under stress, my heart is also under stress. So <clears throat> I do a lot to calm down the heart, to reduce sympathogenic tonus, and so again, you see only the left, uh, the right ventricle, but you want to see the left. So I bring down the left uh, ventricle, the anterior wall, without touching the heart, uh, only by these sutures according to Professor Jean's technique. Uh, sometimes you need two uh, sutures, sometimes you need 10. Now I study the anatomy. Now I see all, uh, again the, how calm is the heart now just only after elevating the legs. I study the anatomy with the diagonal branches and I will put the octopus between the diagonal branches. And, um, but before doing this, I adapt the octopus um, to the surface of the heart. The better you adapt the octopus, the less you have to press down uh, the, the myocardium. It's always about reducing stress and manipulation to the heart. And the heart should not feel that we will operate on him. So, and uh, I do the averting stitches and from inside to outside, outside, inside, exposing thereby nicely the LED, which is important to insert the shunt and to do a nice anastomosis. <clears throat> These sutures only uh, to interrupt shortly the coronary flow uh, for this second to insert a shunt. But before opening the LID, again, team communication, we show all together on the heart surface, but also on the monitor. We see a perfect hemodynamic with a good pressure and low heart rate. So, um, in this gooseneck uh, formation, I insert the shunt. Uh, how I, <clears throat> what I learned 17 years ago in Leuven uh, does not change um, <clears throat> the technique over all these years. And um, these techniques uh, were very assisted in all, all these um, um, clinical uh, circumstances where I have to fight for this procedure and it works very, very still, these uh, Sejan's concepts. And also the anastomosis, um, <clears throat> I do um, like we teach, uh, Professor San teach in the anastomotic skill course. We start from the heel, bring down um, with two stitches, out, um, inside, outside, outside, inside, bring down the coronary and um, suture uh, left-sided around and the coronary. But of course, there are many ways to do a good anastomosis.
you see the, the heart is contracting very well, it's calm, the surface uh, is um, viable with a good color. We'll see if the heart is ischemic, it gets blue or gray, but here it's uh, rosa. And of course, the stitches could be uh, not too far into the coronary, very near to the margin, perhaps uh, one millimeter, not, not more, not to create a stenosis distally to the anastomosis. Therefore, I also um, free up the LED um, from, from, from the adventitia and um, the surrounding tissue, not to have uh, adhesions. Uh, the same for the mammary artery. Mm. We use mostly a blower to, um, to have a good view on the coronary. We see also the octopus is not pressing down the myocardium. It's only at the surface stabilizing um, only this area around, around um, the site of the anastomosis. There's no, nearly no blood. Of course, we have cell saver. We, um, we use it if necessary. Always uh, take care about uh, um, analyzing the size of the anastomosis and also the, the inflow. Sometimes I cut a, a tutitzer and um, to have no uh, stenosis across to adhesions. Here's a nice curse. And of course, it's obligatory to have uh, flow measurements. Thank you very much. <laughs>